good evening, ladies and gentlemen, or rather good afternoon, I guess. And welcome to another episode of Paint Desk Ramblings. I'm jo joined tonight by no one. I'm here by myself again. It's been a while since last time I did, that, did an episode like that. And the reason I'm doing it again is uh, threefold, actually. Um, first is that it's actually quite a lot of, lot of work to try and get together and plan and schedule a lot of that an episode with with guests so it's uh, a lot easier and simpler to just do it by myself i know shocking and uh, yeah i'm a bit lazy uh the second reason is that i have a have had a topic in mind for a while that is doesn't really require guests at all so yeah i wanted to um to do, get to it someday and that was a good time because the third reason is that I've long been uh, toying with the thought of doing a live stream of my little show. So this is my first attempt at that. So hello world. And uh, yeah, we shall see how it goes basically. Um, I've done like zero uh, advertisement for this and so so I doubt there will be anyone seeing it live but maybe one or two uh, we'll see or not um, if you are watching it live please let us let me know in the comment comments in the chat window if there are any troubles if you can hear me all right if the background noise is too high uh, stuff like that always helpful I've t tried doing test recordings and test streams and such um, but uh, you never know how it ends up in in the real world. Um, so we'll see about that. And yeah, I mentioned that the, the topic for tonight is suited for a um, single person, no guest needed. And the topic is another fluff focus episode. I've done this a few times, it's just me sitting down and talking a bit about the fluff of the Night Age. And sure, I could have people on to comment on it, but um, it doesn't really feel necessary. It's just me rambling into a microphone for a while. So hopefully that will go all right. Uh, and the specific piece of fluff that's uh, in focus this time are the Holy Trin Trinities, also known as the Elven Deities, the Elven Gods um, in the Ninth Age. Um, there's a book coming. The Dread Elves are getting a legendary army book. I don't really know when, but it's in the works and it's the next one that will be released. So it felt appropriate to do something focused on the Dread Elves, give you some background info on what's already out there uh, about the Elven Gods as it happens. Should maybe do a, another episode about the history of the Elves, which is also quite interesting. But not this time, this is for the gods. Um, before we get into all of that, however, we have to shine the hobby spotlight. And I've started working on my... Oh, it's really dark on my camera here. wonder why. Um, I started working on my... Maybe it gets better if I do that. Yeah, a little bit better, I think. I started working on my Imperial Guard for my Empire Sword Style army. <clears throat> so I have like 40 guys, Svihenda, uh, with big swords lined up waiting for some paint. And this is the first one I'm getting to. And the reason I'm starting with this guy for this show is that it's a really cool manufacturer and a really cool model. This guy is from Nightmare Miniatures. And uh, he's simply known as a soldier captain. I'll put the link in the description um, after the stream has ended. I guess I could have put it in the start. We'll have to look into that, into that next time. Um, it's a really cool model I think. With his big sword uh, and a lot of stuff on his backpack. Very high detail. Very characterful. Just what I like. And he <coughs> Excuse me. He's just gonna be a another grunt in this unit of 40 Imperial Guard. 
Um, so that's what I'm working on. If you are painting while listening to this, especially if you're doing it live, then uh, please put in into the comments what you are working on. And if you're not live, then put it in the in the rather if you do it live, put it in the chat. If you're not watching it live, put it in the comments. That's the way it should be. Uh, always interesting to see, hear what people are working on. That is, after all, the purpose of these shows to paint minis and uh, supply some background noise for doing it. So, with that out of the way, let's get on to some news. And um, to start off, we have some new miniatures from MOM miniatures, MOM miniatures. Um, they are continuously pumping out new stuff, it seems, um, from the recent Kickstarter. And here we have a Plague Demon, perfect for a uh, Miser of Sukulag, I would think. But, I mean, there are other things you can use it as, probably. probably. A cool model, I think. Um, nice pose, like, hunching out, out over the enemy. Um, yeah, and fills out his base very nicely. So check that out. They've also released, uh, among other things, a uh, uh, evil dwarf cannon, I think it's called. Um, dark dwarf cannon, um, which looks pretty neat. Would be per perfect as a weapon team for the infernal dwarfs, I think. So also check that out and check out their other releases. There's a ton of them on the news section of their site. And yeah, that's actually gonna do it for miniatures that have been released. Um, but there's some other news as well. <coughs> Another spoiler was dropped for the Vermin Swarm. Uh, the 11th spoiler, I think. And uh, it concerned the Swarm Priest, the wizard option for the Vermin Swarm. And uh, Pretty standard wizard, really very, um, very fragile, I guess, like a goblin. Only two health points, and uh, but some some really cool rules with church, uh, as they can take either plague church or normal church, I guess. And if you ha if you have three models from the same church, you can take um, higher level spells than you normally normally can. So if you have three adepts, they cannot take the number five and six spells from their paths, even if they don't all have the same path. They have two path op options each church. So you can take three little wizards and uh, get thaumaturgy um, and have the wrath of God on them, which could potentially be a bit broken um, because you can like have multiple. Wrath of God users and just keep sacrificing them to cast your spell, which is pretty powerful. But I mean, yeah, I don't know. It uh, you're still sac sacrificing models to get spells through, which even though they are fairly cheap, it's still not ideal. So I think it's a co cool rule. Um, look for forward to seeing the rest of it, basically. Um, Next, we have that the HR team is hiring, looking for more co-workers in the Night Age team. So if you're at all interested in that, go check it out. As, you, as always, I'll include links to the news in the description, although I don't think it will be available during the live stream. But afterwards. Uh, and the last bit of news is the Ninth Age trading card game that was announced just a few days ago. Uh, looked pretty cool. Um, uh, I guess Ninth Age are trying to reach a bigger crowd with it, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Could be interesting. Could be not. Could be a joke. It was released on the first of April, so who knows? Um, 
I think they moved the thread of it to the homebrew section in, ca in case anyone wants to keep working on it, because it seems that it was just a joke after all. Unlike the last e April Fool's joke that w was the greatest April April's Fool's joke ever, namely adding giants to the game, or to every faction of the game. That was awesome. I love that. Alright. <clears throat> That's uh, gonna do it for the news, I guess. Let's, um... Oh, uh, Veil of the Ages is saying hi in the chat. Hello, good to have you, have you on. Um, so there are people out there. Nice. Alright, moving on to the main topic, which is the Holy Trinities, also known as the Elven Gods. And they are shared among all the three elf factions, um, as a, a group of gods, basically. Um, we know of them from a variety of sources. First among these is the uh, a study, a study of the gods by uh, uh, Emerentius from nine oh seven AS. It's um, several extracts from this book can be seen in the Sylvan Elves full army book. Uh, and they each give uh, some pretty detailed insight into a uh, collection of gods. Very little in terms of overarching information though, but we get a little bit of that from Jorge Samorhan in the main rulebook, as he talks about the uh, Dread Elves, and he mentions that, just yes, in passing, that they are, that they worship uh, like dark versions of the Holy Trinities, the Elven Gods, the Holy Tr Trinities. And we can assume that all of the Elven factions worship these because the names that appears in A Study of Gods, they also appear on items and spells and stuff, and rules on... Uh, um, among the uh, all three Elven factions in the Slim books. Uh, so it seems very likely that they are shared among them all. Although sometimes with, with a little bit different spelling, as we'll see as we dive into it. Um, and all another piece of information that supports the, this theory is that they are called the Holy, Holy Trinity, Trinities, and the sources, the Study of Gods by Emerentius, he presents the gods in sort of groups of three, <clears throat> for the mo most part, and it can be seen as a suggestion that it is that uh, what he is talking about. So, uh, and I've prepared some <clears throat> some images actually to help us talk this through. Um, that's not it. That's a demon. Uh, so, the first part of this, the first group, the first trinity, is the Phantom Queen and her alternative forms. Um, she's called uh, Muritaur, and you might recognize her from the name of the hereditary spell of the Dreadals, the new um, Slim Book of the Dreadals. She's like uh, one of the two, ru two rulers of the um, Elven uh, Phantom, alongside another we'll get to uh, very soon, and she has three forms, uh, like variants or avatars, uh, whatever you want to call them. Um, Veil of the Ages is common, common thing that I should try to make this bigger. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Maybe like that. Let's see. Uh, that looks good. okay. No more face for me. For me, then I can um, focus on my painting better anyway. <clears throat> uh, thank you, particularly. Uh, I don't have to stay in camera with all my painting. So uh, the three forms of. Muritaur. 
Um, she represents like what the um, elves have to offer their society. So we have Tula, the crone, uh, who's the god of wisdom. So she can offer uh, the elves can offer wisdom to their society. We have um, Naram, the mother, <coughs> who offers fertility and rebirth. And we have Akam, the warrior, who offers power. And these are all fairly unknown. I haven't seen them mentioned like anywhere in um, in the uh, rules and items and such. But uh, well, they they will become relevant soon enough. And we have to zoom in here again, unfortunately. So it it messed up my smooth transitions to the next picture. <clears throat> um, but whatever. Uh, next we have the other half of this, which is. The Allfather, uh, Amher, who is um, like the king who rules um, beside the Phantom Queen over the Elven deities. And he also has three forms. Uh, Vyamig, the king, who uh, uh, he represents like, uh, like Amher and his forms represent the temptations and struggles that the um, elves suffer from, and uh, <coughs> uh, Vyamig the king represents uh, duty. All elves have to fulfill their duty, uh, so they struggle with that. Next we have Gemma, the tempter, who is like the sex god of the elves. He represents the temptations of the flesh. And you might recognize him from one of the cults that the Dreadels could pick from in their old book, the Slim version. <clears throat> um, and uh, yeah, that's about it for him. And then the third is Cateron the Hunter, who uh, also had a cult uh, dedicated to him in the old book. Uh, he represents the Call of the Wild, like the desire for them to go back to wilderness and just hunt and live off the nature, nature I guess. Um, so that's the second of the trinities. The third is the most <clears throat> the most obvious as, as a trinity. It's the divine daughters. So each of these three forms of the two uh, leader, leader gods they paired up and had Children, daughters, one each. Uh, as you can see here, uh, Vyamig and Tula had Miladis, Gemma and Naram had Amril, and Cateron and Bekam had Nab. Or N Nib, sometimes known as. Um, so, starting from the top, Miladis, the Grand Mistress, she's for wisdom and uh, um, <clears throat> and she strives to ascend her father's throne. Uh, try, trying to learn as much and be worthy of his his throne. Although, like supernal beings, do they die? Can he, she ever really ascend her throne? I don't know. Um, and we, of course, recognize her from a certain item of the Hibern Elves, the Book of Miladis, which is uh, super powerful. Um, so yeah, that's where we know her from. And next we have Amril, the Forest Queen, and she is the ruler of one of two rulers of Viscan, the forest where the Sylvan Elves, the Trevi, live. Uh, and we might recognize her from an item of the um, Sylvan Elves, the Glyph of Amril. Although I have to admit, I can't recall what it does, so maybe it's not that common. Uh, unlike the Book of Miladis. Um, but yeah, she's known too. <clears throat> and then finally we have Nib or Nab, depending on the spelling, uh, the War Crow. She is um, yeah, the most standard war god you can imagine, I guess. Um, and um, 
also had a cult among the Red Elves in the old book, under the, under the spelling Nab. In the uh, A Study of Gods, she was named Nib. We don't know for sure if it's the same god, and I guess uh, we'll never truly know like how much can we know about gods, but it seems likely that they are one and the same. Or like, maybe not the same, but uh, Nib can be very very similar to Nab, um, in some sort of way at least. But whatever. Um, so that's that trinity. We'll move on to the Earthly Descendants, and this is quite loosely a a trini trinity, really. Uh, it starts with Cadaron again, but this time with a different epithet. The, this is Cadaron the Forest King, as opposed to Cadaron the Hunter. And the relationship between these two is a bit unknown. He's like described as an avatar of the hunter, but like uh, the hunter is himself an avatar or form of the Allfather, so it's a bit weird. Um, and it gets weirder <clears throat> because Cadron is paired up with Cadron, the Forest King, is paired up with Am Amril, the Forest Queen. Makes sense. Checks out. And they are rulers of uh, Viscan. And it appears in a very very literal sense, like they seem to walk around in that forest and actually rule over it. Um, it's said that the lords of the forest, the nobility of the Trevi, answer dire directly to the king and queen. Um, which is pretty cool. And should be noted that these are like supernal beings, so they shouldn't be able to remain in the mortal realm for any, any ex extended periods of time. But somehow they do it, and it's like rumored that there is a power source somewhere in Viscan that sustains them. But um, it's not known for sure. Um, and sometimes they seem to vanish, vanish for a while, and then they reappear sometime later. So a bit weird, again. Um, and what gets weirder is that they have children together, and this, like, Amril is the daughter of an, a form of the Amher, the Allfather, and Cadron is also a form of Amher, the Allfather, so it's kind of like pairing up with his own daughter in a way, I don't know. But like these are gods, it's, it, it seems fitting, uh, like Greek mythology and Norse mythology, these things were fairly common in those uh, types of relig religions, so um, yeah, checks out. <clears throat> <laughs> and we have uh, Mar uh, Marco on the stream as well, who is uh, very uh, prolific on developing the background for the Ninth Age, so he's... Um, Making sure I do it do it right, and also you, uh, Johan, nice, good to have you all, you all here. Although we are getting closer to the end, I guess. Um, so where was I? Cadron, um, as I said, paired up with Emeril, and had. and had a broken headset, it seems. Uh, sorry about that. Um, and, and had twin daughters, uh, Sura, the bringer of spring, and Suma, the uh, winter prince. Out the earthly descendants, like these are like walking around in the forest of Wiscan as normal beings, more or less, which is pretty rare among the gods. So that's what make them, makes them really special. Mm. And Sura is a guy, apparently. Um, the bringer of spring. So they're not twin daughters, just twins. I uh, seem to have had some trouble with the connection, but should be up and running. <clears throat> 
thank you, Marco. And next we have a group of other gods that don't really seem to fit with the rest. Uh, maybe not gods even at all even. Um, these are are mentioned like here and there in the background and in the in the rules, um, and they don't know if they are a trinity in any <clears throat> any form. They might not be connected in any way. Um, so there might might be a lot more out there that we don't know yet. But to start this off, we have Ularon, who we recognize as one of the cults for the the Dread Elves in their old Slim book. And that's all I have on him. No idea what he, he's about at all. Uh, next we have Sen Senern, um, who is never mentioned in the fluff, as far as I can tell. He does appear on a lot of, or at least two, uh, rules though. Uh, the da dances of Senern of the Blade Dancers. And the drum of Senirn, an, an artifact with the uh, the Sylvan Elves. So maybe a god, maybe not. Seems a bit tricksy. Um, yeah, that's all I have on him. Uh, and then finally Dorak, who appeared in a pretty long story in the twelfth issue of the Night Scroll. Um, that talks about uh, an old legend from the Second Age, where a bunch of elven... Uh, this was like before the elves proliferated into different factions, so these were just elves. And they... Uh, elven, a bunch of elven prin princes, um, I think five of them, got magic super armor from Dorak. And... Um, had some sort of war and were killed <laughs> despite the magic super armor I guess um, and you might also recognize him from a name in the Dreadloft book the Blades of Dorak they're um, sort of magic weapons that give, gives them higher strength when targeted by uh, spells so it seems to check out that he's some sort of smithing god um, but yeah, that's all I have on him. Have on him. Um, I should mention that the sources for um, Cadaron and Amril and their relation and, and all of that is collected mostly from uh, the Nine Scroll issues, issue eight, I think it was, and uh, the some other texts in the. Um, Silvan Elf Legendary Army book. Also, they have a connection with some of the units in the in their army book. It seems um, Cadaron, the Forest King, seems to have a connection to the Wild Huntsmen. They serve him directly. It's stated, and maybe we can infer from that that the Briar Maidens serve um, Amril directly. They are fairly similar unit um, in in the fluff. Both are like um, they only include members of one gender and uh, um, are like a, a bit secluded from the rest of the society. So um, could be that there's some sort of connection there. Um, I'm guessing that we will learn a bit more about these holy trinities as time goes on, when we get the Dread Elf book. But um, this is a base of it. And uh, I've already ha had some help from Marco in the chat, but if you think I missed anything else, please let me know in the comments afterwards. Um, because I th think this will pretty much do it for this live stream. Um, I'll switch back to this <coughs> picture, which I think is of Cadaron, the Forest King. Um, I imagine it, it, it is at least, at least. Big cool elven dude. Um, but yeah.
again, that's pretty much all I have. So um, let's go into wrap up. Um, how my painting has been going. Haven't gotten that much done, but the uniform on this uh, Imperial Guard is almost finished. Um, so happy with that. It's really good to be painting Empire guys again. They are a lot of fun. Um, I uh, really look forward to having this unit finished. It's my it's the last <coughs> last big unit for my Empire Stormstall. So making making progress. Uh, let's see some more comments. Oh, and Marcos <coughs> uh, is saying to look forward to a spoiler about the background um, background supplement for the Red Elves. Yeah, I guess they will be getting a, a, a unique background supplement like the other uh, books. That would be cool. And he says that Sura is the main Sylvan Elf character in the Sylvan Elf book. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, as I said, we'll see more in the future. Um, but I think it's about time to wrap up this stream. <laughs> and uh, Pitaglio is looking forward to getting scans of these miniatures. Hopefully that will be possible to do soon enough. I'm waiting for a tripod. Um, yeah, all right. Time to wrap up. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, this has been fun. I think I will keep doing live streams. Um, please let me know in the comments how you, ex you thought the live stream went, if it's a format that's suitable for this kind of thing. Um, and I can only thank you very much for watching this one, uh, whether live or in the future. And uh, I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers! <laughs>